It is no surprise that doing a bear poor craft was absolutely fun and really cool to do as a custom project. And as you've been seeing, these projects look absolutely fun and phenomenal, and you can keep them as decoration or you can put them as charms, depending on the size of the bear. And I have to say, ever since I did this project with my sister, I just can't stop thinking about it. I wanna do more and more and more which is why I had the fun idea of making this into its own craft kit. So welcome on the journey of me putting together this kit alongside with Muse Kits. As I've done for all of our craft kits, we've always done a making of video, so you get to see the process, what we chose, what we said no to, why we chose the things we did, so you know exactly why we went in the direction that we did. And I know many of you really like these videos, and I like making these videos because I like seeing behind the scenes. By the way, Jackie from the future here, I usually interject and react on my old videos, but since this was filmed, I'm watching this and it doesn't really need much more explanation, but I'll probably jump in more on the second half of this video. And don't forget to let me know what kind of paint pouring experience you've had in the comment section below. I'd love to know what you've done. Oh, and by the way, we are launching this week. So I just want to show this box, by the way. This is not going to be in the craft kit, this specific box, because look Look at it. It says here, you can make a crap with a violet bear. I don't know why this bear be violent. I guess it's because it's called gloomy bear. It's supposed to be of the violent variety, but it's not violent. And then here, look at this. We're starting off strong here. Okay, look at this. It says that this is a bear white embryo. Something is lost in translation. What the heck? Although part of me would like to put dumb things on the boxes, I think people would get scared if they saw the word embryo in a craft kit. Some of them just won't see that I was like being a little cheeky. Let's go to the journey. We're going to be making an entire project. At least today is going to be part one. So we're going to test out the clay. We're going to test out the bears, check the bears. And then part two, we'll probably play around with color and see what's up. And here are the items you can see on the desk. Of course, we're going to have the gloomy bears. We're going to have air dry clay, mixing cups, ready to pour paint. We definitely don't want you greens to have to mix different kinds of ratios. So we're working with different kinds of paints to find out which one gives us a better flow. And of course, you'll be getting different cups with different divisions. Now, I haven't decided which one I like yet, but for sure not this one because the silicone here is extremely thin and just by holding it, it's already collapsing. Obviously, if you press hard on any of them, they're flexible, but this one is even more than usual. So I already know which one I'm not taking, but let's see the items a little bit more up close. Now, just to be clear, the paint that we used in our original video is this brand over here, which is great quality, very liquidy. And then here, also pretty liquidy. I've never worked with this fluid ready to pour acrylic paint before. So I'm excited to see the differences. But before we do that, let's move, oh my goodness. Let's move all the paints aside. Oh, oh my goodness, it's a mess. See, that's why testing products, you have to have, oh my goodness, what's all this mess? Okay, I'm gonna move you, move you. And I think the star of the show is going to be the actual bears. Actually, everything is going to be important. Even the air dry clay is going to be very important. Oh my goodness, that is soft. Okay, we're gonna play around with this. But let's check these gloomy embryo bears. Oh my God. I'm really excited. I'm hoping that these bears are not wonky, like the bigger ones that I actually played around with in my main video. They were inconsistent in terms of their actual quality. All right, let's see you. Oh wow, look at that. Oh wow, oh wow, very nice. I did say I wanted good packaging, so they definitely delivered on that. Those are cute. And you do get the little keychains with it. Now, if you don't want to make it into a keychain, that's totally okay. You can un-keychain them and make them stand on their own. Let's bring my felt. Here you go, my trusty little felt. And here's the little gloomy bear. Now, I do see that this seems to be broken. Let's just double check. But that's not just the design. Let's get this going. Come on. Yeah, that one was broken. So we have an issue with that one. So that's something we definitely want them to double check that we don't have any kind of quality control issues. And they are a hollow plastic. So we're using less plastic per item. And let's check the rest. Pull you out, pull you out, and you. Let's do a 360, definitely looks good. This one's good. 
Next one, turn around, nothing broken or chipped, okie dokie. And this one as well seems to be good. All right, so it's just this one that had the fingers kind of chopped off for some reason. And the clasps that come with it, we have a jump ring at the bottom so you can put it inside, well, the loop for the bear. And the top part where you have to bring, so it doesn't close like this, you have to bring it on the underside to lock it in nicely. So that's a good lock here. I was a little worried because I saw the gap I was like, oh no, now we need to ask for different gaps, but no, it just needs to be tucked like this underneath. So that's good. Now, among many other things for the air dry clay, one of the most important also is to have a resealable bag. We do not want to leave you grains without a resealable bag or a clay that can't be resealed somehow, or at least an extra container or something, because that's something I always complain about. But it's going to be really important to make sure that this clay, let's get it open, is compatible with the actual, let's get you out. Oh my goodness. Very gummy. And forgive the fact that everything is basically white. I mean, how else are we supposed to customize it? This is really easy on the fingers. So if you have any kind of chronic pains, this should be super easy to mold and to actually turn into a character of your choosing. So for this one, I'm going to go pretty simple because I want to see how well it sticks and if we need extra glue in this craft kit. So I'm going to change the ears to kitty cat ears. Actually, do I want to change it to cat or bunny? That is too much. <laughs> that is too much, Jackie, what are you doing? Oh, that is sticking. <gasps> that is awesome. Okay. That is awesome. The fact that it's actually sticking is phenomenal. I did not expect that kind of adhesive. Now, because this is air dry clay, you do have to use water to smooth it out if you want to, but I'm going to take a little less this time. I'm going to put it on the ears like so and go as gently as possible to make kitty cat ears. Look at that. That's really cute. Kind of be an angry kitty, almost a gremlin. <laughs> Almost a gremlin kitty, so we can smooth it. Wow, that is soft. It's gonna be interesting to see how strong it's going to be after it hardens. Okay, you have one gremlin kitty cat ear, and let's take the other side. I may have taken not enough. <laughs> Don't be a Jackie, definitely measure your, your things. And, oh my goodness, I definitely did not take enough. So I'm gonna smooth it in, and the hardness is going to be very interesting. Push it all the way down. That is wonderful so far. Yeah, it's kind of a gremlin type character. Almost, almost stitch actually. And let's smooth the back because I definitely don't want these kinds of gaps. And because it's so smooth, if you use a tool, the likelihood of it actually smushing is probably higher. So I do have better control with my fingers over here. Voila. Yeah, that is definitely a gremlin character. <laughs> there, that's pretty cute. You know what? I do like spikes, so I might add some spikes in the back here, just because I am curious on the amount of detail we can add and how much we can get away with. So we're gonna add a couple of spikes in the back. Do I wanna add a mohawk? Now I'm thinking, there we go. We can even add a tail if we wanted to. All right, let's, let's add some spikes and then we're gonna maybe add a tail. Oh, and by the way, we will be including a silicon work surface so that you can pour into and not worry about it. And the figurine already does stand on its own. So if you do add more things, make sure that you are balancing it. So here's the character. I'm gonna go ahead and add a little tail. There's a lot of clay in here. Maybe something like so. Turn around, we're gonna stick it near the butt. Voila. <laughs> Why is this so cute? And because I don't want to ruin any kind of balance, I'm gonna push the tail towards the bottom to kind of have a continuity. Voila, I'm gonna smooth the rest of it as much as possible, as close as possible to the body. So we have an even transition as much as possible. If you do see that the clay is getting a little stiff, feel free to add some water. So I'm gonna do this like so, and I'm gonna go ahead and add more spikes down the tail. Remember, if you're gonna make this into a keychain, just be careful that pieces are not sticking out too, too far because it's going to get hit around or moved around in your backpack. So keep items as close as possible. But we're gonna be testing all that right now to see what we can get away with. And here's my simple character. I absolutely love this. You really don't have to do much to make this a cool character, but I also added a little heart. So I made this by hand. It looks a little wonky, but I think that's what's gonna give it a little personality. We're gonna put this heart right in the middle of the chest like a so. So we can even paint it later to make things stand out a little bit more. There we go. That's a custom character. <laughs> 
I love it. So I'm gonna let this sit for about an hour and then we're gonna come back and do some paint pour on this. Maybe we might not need a part two, but you know what? I think I might need a part two because I wanna do another test. I'm going to shove one of these bears in the oven to see if we only need air dry clay or if we can get away with polymer clay. Why is everything so blurry? Bro, there you go. I'm gonna put this in the oven. If it melts, then we can't use polymer clay. If it doesn't melt, then we could put polymer clay. Let me try that. For this purpose, I'm going to be using Sculpey 3 because, I mean, it's really soft. So if we do go with any kind of Sculpey, hopefully we can get Sculpey 3. A small pack should go a really long way. And I took yellow so that we can tell the difference. One is going to be yellow and the other one is going to be white as a customization. And let's go ahead and customize exactly the same way. Poof! Magic! Now I do have my doubts on certain parts, so I think the heart, whether it's on the air dry clay or the polymer clay, will have a hard time sticking. I think the tail should be okay, some of the spikes may not be, but I think the ears will be okay. So I think it might be important to see after they fully dry, if they're easy to come out, or if we need, let's say for this one, some liquid clay, or for this one maybe some white glue. But off you go into the oven. Oh man, I don't know if your grains are ready for this, this is exciting. You ready? So here's the little bear. I'm gonna cover my hand here. Here's the little bear that we took out of the oven in three, two, one, two, two. <laughs> oh, buddy. Oh, no. It melt. It kind of looks like a fox. Looks cool. And this was only five minutes at 250 degrees Fahrenheit. Here it is in Celsius for my Celsius grains. So this is in no way, look at that, the clay is still absolutely not cured. So oven is an absolute no. I do like the fox face, kind of cool, but yeah, definitely not an oven person. So we're gonna have to throw this and continue with air dry clays. And so here we are a few hours later, looking back at the actual clay and how it reacts on the bear. I think this video is going to speak for itself. And if we're going to look at the character over here, the heart just came off. I didn't even notice. Where did it go? Aha, it fell in the tray. So unfortunately we can't add a QD type mark unless we have an adhesive. So. This is the process that we're going through. The ears are pretty solid because they're attached to the actual main figurine. So any kind of customization that you do directly on items attached to the figurine are gonna stay. But if you do items attached directly onto the plastic, these bits will come off unless there's an adhesive. So that's something we need to keep in mind. Also same thing for the tail, but look at this. The flexibility of this clay are absolutely phenomenal. I wanted to make sure that the clay was going to stay flexible so that if by accident it hits something lightly, like this, it wasn't just going to break off. So that's something that I'm really happy with this quality of clay. Very super lightweight, very sturdy, but we need to make sure that it stays sturdy on the figurine. So let's go ahead and do some paint pour. Now the thing is I'm kind of debating between the one, two, three, four, five compartment my only worry is that this is quite thin and flexible. Otherwise, if we're going for a thicker silicone, we're going with one, two, three, four colors. I do like the five color, but it only comes in a thinner plastic, man. But the thing is the bear is tiny. However, I do want you grains to have the option to have more colors. And if you only wanted two, then you can only do two compartments. If you wanted only like three, you could do three compartments, but having more and then the option to scale down is easier than scaling up from four to five. So I'm gonna go ahead and test this one and see what we could do. So we're gonna try five colors on a tiny bear. And I think I'm gonna go with yellow, turquoise, red, gold. Green is too close to the turquoise. So I think we're gonna go with a dark color and go with this blue. All right, so I'm putting the silicone on the mat over here just so that's tilted forward since we don't want the paint to kind of travel everywhere. I'm gonna do, this is really nice and liquidy. Hopefully it's not too thick. So we're gonna start with the blue over here. This is my first time, so I'm not sure how much paint we're gonna need. And we're gonna go alternate with dark, light, dark, light. So we're gonna put our yellow over here. We have our red. I don't think we need that much paint, but it's gonna be better to gauge this way. Oops, I totally skipped one, oh no! <laughs> okay, that's my mistake. We're gonna put the turquoise in here. That is gonna be a completely different vibe. Oh no. And the gold on the other side, and voila. That is definitely a lot of paint. Worst case, we're gonna make multiple bears. Let's add a little bit more. Voila. 
And the first thing we need to know about paint pouring, I'll explain all that with the instructional videos that come with it. So I'm not going to go into too much detail, but look at that. We have all our colors divided. So I'm just going to go ahead and paint. Let me get a little closer because it's more fun when you can see and you have the mat. So I'm just going to go ahead and do the paint pouring here. So we're going to go in all the underneath bits first. And here's what it looks like so far. I absolutely love the different color variations. There are still techniques to work on when it comes to tiny bears like this one. So let's see if this pipette actually works. I'm gonna pull some color in and just drizzle a few, like a so. Yeah, so far so good. And there's really a lot of gold on the head, but I think that's just part of the pour. And this pipette seems to make the colors a little muddy. So I'm not gonna take that risk, not one bit. I don't want a muddy color. Now, normally with this kit, you're going to also be getting a really cool hanging, drying stand. Right now, I don't have it with me, but we did design one customly made for this kit. So this is going to be hang drying. It's not going to sit in a puddle of normal paint like this one. Yes, you heard. We're actually going to be giving you a drying rack so that the bears are actually hanging up, drying and dripping into the silicone mold. So you don't have to worry about it actually sitting in its own pool of paint. That was one of the things I didn't like because it always felt like the underneath part of the bear just was never drying. But now you have that option to just let it hang and dry evenly everywhere. You'll see that in part two. So in theory, we would have something that would go through here. Let's get you. And we're gonna let it hang dry like that. So I don't have that option right now. So I'm just going to move it somewhere dry-ish. <laughs> like over here. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, like a soul. There, and I'm gonna let it dry overnight. And here's a little bit of a look around of the bear itself. I have to say, I really love the randomness of poor painting or poor art. And hey, if you really don't like what it looks like, nothing stops you from taking it, washing it completely from scratch, drying it up and retrying another set of colors. Oh my God, I know this is completely accidental. I don't know if this is going to dry this way, but I do like that this blue area here looks like eyes and the bottom part of the red almost looks like dragon and a horn It's completely accidental. That's what I love about paint pouring is you don't know what you're gonna get. And here is our cute little dino bear, Bearazaurus. <laughs> and as you can see, when it's sitting on its own flat surface, we're getting these weird little paw things. It just looks funny and it doesn't hang dry or dry evenly. And even at the bottom of the tail, we have kind of a little knob of paint. But the bear itself is absolutely adorable and the paint quality is phenomenal. The paint actually dries a little bit on the shiny side. Not too glossy because I'm not a fan of extra glossy, but it is a little shiny. And I did some scratch tests to see if it would come off the figurine. And I've scratched it quite a few times. Not excessively because if I really want to, I'll scratch it off. but enough to see if it would actually be an adhesive or if it would peel right off. And luckily it actually did not peel right off. Now in part two, we're going to be a little bit more detailed and test it a little further. So make sure you have notifications on, on this channel. This is Nerdy Jackie, not Nerdy Crafter channel. So if you're here and you're like, what is this channel? This is my vlog channel, put notifications on. I'll see you in the next vlog.